members treat these Langer seats? Yes, on the seats in the gallery. Thank you, Gretchen. I was told, just a prayer, not a sermon. <laughs> so if we could just do a compromise of giving me at least five minutes, are you okay with that? Uh, life is not the same when you're called into pastoral ministry the same week of 9-11. My thinking of going into pastoral ministry was, wow, I can't wait to get into this thing called being a pastor. But when you're called into ministry on September 6th, 2001 and you accept the call on September 7th and friends take you out to celebrate on September 8th and on September 9th I attended church service at the church that called me September 10th 2001 I relaxed and said here we go here's my time to be a pastor in America and September 11th that Tuesday 2001 I felt God said welcome to the reality of ministry it is not a picnic in the park it is warfare. And I just want to encourage you before I pray, and I want to read scripture related to this prayer, to be sure to build your house on the solid rock that is Christ Jesus and the Word of God. For any foundation not built on that solid rock will fall. Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame, even when they contend with their opponents in court. So we see God's handiwork in the house, the city, the family, and even in a courthouse. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to stand freely today and gather for this meeting without the overwhelming fear of uh, attack or persecution, but having a sense of security. I ask for your blessing over this time. Uh, I thank you for the laborers here in the courthouse, in the city, and this region here, and I ask your blessing over them and upon them, uh, and that there should be orderly and productive, uh, and give them a great day, God, throughout today, a day of encouragement, and a great time with uh, family, friends, and uh, their other associates. And we thank you again for the freedom that we have uh, to gather here today, to celebrate, to worship, to work, to live. Let us not take that 
freedom for granted. Uh, we pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
There's too many people standing in the way. <laughs>
wealthy countries in the world and supposedly one of the most civilized, and still we have the anniversary of Take Back the Night. I look forward to the day when the anniversaries are no longer necessary. Our proclamation reads, recognizing the 20th anniversary of Will County's Take Back the Night, whereas Take Back the Night was first held in, Jan in Germany I'm sorry, in 1973 in response to a series of sexual assaults and murders. Five years later, the first event was held in the United States. And whereas the purpose of Take Back the Night is to bring survivors, supporters, activists, and community leaders together in a call for the end of violence against women, create a greater awareness of violence against women in our community, and educate the public about the attitudes and behavior that perpetuate this problem. And whereas for the past 20 years, Take Back the Night has provided support and services for crime victims throughout the Will County area. And whereas Take Back the Night is critical to Will County's overall commitment to raising awareness about violence against women and the tragedies it creates. And whereas each year, the event includes a speaker, candlelight vigil to memorialize victims, a brief march, entertainment, and an information table with materials from organizations in helping victims of violence. And whereas this year, two events are scheduled. Will County Take Back the Night will be held on October 16, 2016 at St. John Lutheran Church, Joliet, starting at 4.30. And Take Back the Night of Northern Will County will be held on October 13, 2016 at the Page Township Levy Center, Bolingbrook, starting at 5 p.m. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Will County Board and the Will County Executive do hereby recognize Take Back the Night in Will County and call upon the people of Will County to observe the event with appropriate programs, activities, and ceremonies. The 15th day of September 2016, Lawrence and Walsh County Executive, Nancy Schultz, Boots County Clerk, and I salute. Move by Ms. Winfrey, seconded by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion is carried. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm Marty Wunderlich. I'm the, the secretary of the Sierra of Will County Take Back the Night Committee, and I thank you, uh, County Board, for giving us this proclamation. It's our 20th year doing this. It's a great event. I hope uh, all of you can come out to our event at St. John's Lutheran Church on October 16th. Thank you. Jake Trunier, board member from District 4 and also treasurer of Citizens Against Abuse, and that is the Bolingbrook Romeoville area uh, organization that also hosts the Take Back the Night uh, this year on October 13th. And I too, Denise, so look forward to the day when we do not need any organizations like this to protect any families from any type of domestic violence. Thank you. I'm Sandy Iverson, immediate past chair of Citizens Against Abuse. This year our topic is relationships ABCs, healthy versus unhealthy. It doesn't matter if you're in kindergarten to 120 years old. Everybody's got to get along together, know what's right and what's wrong. Um, we're having a panelist this year, panel discussion with our mediator being Carolyn Kahn, who owns Bridges to a New Day in Romeoville. And our panelists are Dr. Sandra Carlson from Sandra Carlson Associates Counseling Services in Bolingbrook, Aaron Carlson, and Ryan Lawrence. One of the counselors is does work with abusers, both male and female. So we're going to hear why they abuse, and this is a good topic for everybody to know. And it's October 13th in DuPage Township.
Next is recognizing September as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, County Board Member Don Gould has a recognition group from his desk. Don. Thank you, Mr. Executive. I'm honored to read into the record proclamation recognizing September as National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. September was designated as National Prostate Health Month in 1999, and in 2003 became known as National Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Prostate cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in men, and the leading cause of cancer death among men, second only to lung cancer. In the United States, an estimated 180,890 new cases of prostate cancer occur annually. In fact, one in seven men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, and each year, more than 26,100 men will die of this disease. Prostate cancer develops mainly in older men. About six in 10 cases are diagnosed in men 65 and older, with an average age of 66 at the time of diagnosis. However, with early detection, the five-year survival cancer, cancer rate is almost 100%. The easiest way to guard against prostate cancer is an annual PSA blood test. I encourage all men and their families to take advantage of the information available to learn about prostate cancer and to support programs and initiatives for early detection, treatment, and research. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tumanello. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. But the record shows town board member Steve will help me. Yes, okay. I might mention, Larry, if you don't mind, that yeah. in the county board office, these lapels are available for $5, and all the proceeds will go to the American Cancer Society. That's good. We have a uh, lot of us out there peddling. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, how many going to spot? <laughs> strong army. We should, we should get her to uh, raise money for the county board. So, yeah. <laughs> that's a good project. Thank you very much, Don. All resolutions approved at the August 18, 2016 County Board meeting have been signed by the County Executive. marks another positive step forward on many fronts. We continue to maintain a strong financial base while advancing critical projects and services that our residents expect from their county government. I will give you a high level overview of what I am proposing and the next steps that I believe we must take to keep Will County moving forward on a sound fiscal path. The budget I present today is balanced. The total county budget is $570 million, of which $197 million is in the corporate fund and $373 million is in special funds. This year's budget proposal meets all our debt uh, obligations and continues to fund our liability for other post-employment benefits at $1 million. I am very proud to report on the positive impact our health insurance plan improvements has had in reducing our overall health insurance cost. We have re re realized $700,000 in savings. The health plan changes were implemented in 2014 
and then have <coughs> resulted in a revised multi-tier structure which higher wage earners paying a larger percentage than those employees at the lower end of the pay scales. These changes along with our ongoing wellness program and related health care improvements have been proven to be successful. This is a positive news, but we all know that the health care spending trends nationwide are unsustainable and the county's plan is no exception. We must continue to work with our employees and our elected officials to further refine our plans to meet the needs of our employees and the families going forward while maintaining a fiscally responsible approach. I am also very proud to report that Will County continues to maintain a AA plus bond rating Rating agencies such as Moody's and Standard & Poor's continue to commend the county on our stable fund balances, controlled expenditures, long-term planning, and strong fiscal policies. This is a testament to the fiscally responsible approach the county board and the county executive's office have taken over the recent years. For the third year in a row, my budget proposal includes a five-year growth in capital plan which recognizes both ongoing and future capital projects, establishes an annual amount for vehicle and equipment replacement, and identifies dedicated sources to fund these projects in 2017. This five-year capital plan is a working document that will be reviewed by the board and revised as we work through the 2017 budget process. It will continue to be updated as new projects and funding sources are identified. However, this plan is only appropriated one year at a time and will be used as a resource when the county is required to make decisions about funding for upcoming projects. As we all are aware, in August, the county issued $175 million in bonds to address our major capital needs, such as the public safety complex, courthouse, health department, and a northern satellite. The 2017 budget includes funding for these capital projects, with our first project being the public safety complex. The groundbreaking for this new facility is anticipated in October. I believe our law enforcement officials and the staff deserve a modern facility that is functional and allows them to do their work in a safe, efficient facility. This project is the beginning phase of our building will plan that we have been discussing over the past several years to move Will County forward. Since issuance of the 2010 road bonds, we have been averaging approximately $24 million per year for highway design and construction. With the expected bid letting of the Weber Road I-55 project in 2017, and with a county contribution of approximately $45 million over the entire project, we must keep significant expenditure authority for our roads and bridge projects. Thus, I am proposing $34 million in budget authorization in fiscal year 2017 for the Will County Transportation Division to continue the great progress that we have made on improving our county transportation infrastructure. We all know that keep to keep Will County strong economically and an attractive place to raise our families, we need to continue to invest in our infrastructure in order to maintain a good transportation system, an effective and efficient county government, and county facilities that we can be proud of, we must not waver from this approach. Due to the uncertainty of a state budget, we continue to actively monitor progress on a long-term budgetary solution in Springfield. From past experience, we know that we could see a reduction of two and a half million dollars in the corporate fund with some of the proposed funding cuts. That would be devastating and would like, likely involve 
cutting critical services and staff reductions. At the same time, we continue to place more demands on our county departments, asking them year after year to do more with less. Our employees do an outstanding job providing the critical service mandated by the state statute. However, as I mentioned before, we must continue to invest in modern technology, such as a new finance system, as well as a case management system for the state's attorney and public defender. By investing in technology and more efficient facilities, we provide the necessary tools for our employees to succeed. This budget includes fundings for these systems. I want to point out a few other facts that I'm sure the board will want to know about this in this budget proposal. The 2017 corporate fund budget reflects an overall increase of 0.8% from 196 million in 2016 to 197 million. The levy includes my recommendation of taking on taking only new property. I am not recommending taking CPI. This translates into an increase in actual levy of $1.5 million. From this total of $1.5 million, $1.25 million will be put into the county board's capital fund, and the remaining $250,000 has been allocated to the health department for mental behavioral health programs. With an expected increase in the EAV and taking new property, the 2016 rate is 0 0.5990, which is lower than the 2015 rate, uh, 0.6358. Also included, the levy is a reduction in the PBC levy due to the consolidation of maintenance and housekeeping into the corporate fund. Overall revenue remains relatively flat, with only slight increases in sales tax collections. There is a slight decline in revenue from charges for services. The corporate fund budget does not include the use of any cash reserves to balance the budget. The combined salary and fringe benefits continue to be steady at 79% of total corporate expenditures. This is the sixth consecutive year that we have been able to keep salaries and fringes in the 76 to 79% range of total corporate expenditures, which remains an improvement from years past where we exceeded 82% or more. Expense increases include $3.1 million for salaries, which covers previous contractual and exempt wage increases. Fringe benefits decreased by $800,000 due to the projected decrease in the overall cost of health insurance and SLEP rate calculation. As we move forward, my staff is available to answer questions and explain the rationale for what I have proposed today. As many of you already know, our budget director, Rashawn Howard, has scheduled informational sessions on Tuesday, September 20th, and Wednesday, September 21st, to share all, more of the details of my proposal. I am hopeful that the board members will take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions and share feedback so we can work together to finalize the 2017 budget. Finally, I would like to thank Budget Director Rashawn Howard for all her hard work. Many months ago, she began this process working with the countywide elected officials and department heads. All of these folks deserve credit for the work that goes into getting us to this point. Working together, we have been successful in moving Will County forward. The path ahead will certainly be challenging, 
but by working together toward our shared vision of a vibrant, modern, and prosperous Will County, we are sure of success. I remain optimistic that with the continued cooperation of the county board members and our elected officials, 2017 will represent a milestone for the future of Will County. Thank you.
Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Mr. O'Gala. Any questions? Agree? Any what, questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Um, we have two, uh, is it, uh, two. Sand, Sandra, Sandra, or Rennie? Yes. And Linda Arnold? <coughs> earlier this week, but I believe it is important to once again tell the school Hill County Board the message from all our neighbors. So, we would just like to personally thank Chairman Weigel and all the board members of the Land Use Department and of course the staff for taking the time, much needed time, to address these <coughs> first amendments uh, to existing and outdated gas stations uh, ordinances. Please know that these proposed motor vehicle fueling station text amendments that you are addressing here today provide some new guidelines for the types of businesses that have a high vehicular volume of traffic and are adjacent to residential areas. Thus, a yes vote by you and our Will County reps will greatly uh, uh, help all the residents regarding safety issues affecting all residents in Will County. I would also like to add that it is our hope that you continue to address future text amendments regarding noise and traffic when implementing car washes that are adjacent to residential areas as well. For example, providing a buffer zone or an amendment stating that car washes need to be built a minimum of 500 feet from residential homes, etc. Once again, thank you for your time today. Our hope is that you, our Will County representatives, will ensure that these amendments before you today become reality by voting yes. Thank you so much to all of you for your hard work. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Linda Arnold, and I'm a, pro a proud Will County resident. As a resident, I appreciate the job that the staff, the land use staff, the land use committee, and the board members are doing to clarify and update the ordinances regarding the fueling stations in the county. The existing ordinances on the books regarding these types of facilities do not take into account the changes in use that have taken place over the years, from the quaint old filling station to today's multi-use high traffic businesses. By clarifying the ordinance and classifying these operations, the board is doing a service to both the residents and the businesses in the county. Residents will know exactly what type of developments may or may not be someday built in the neighborhood, and businesses will also have certainty regarding what is or isn't allowed on a parcel, and lessening the risk associated with a special use permit process, a process of, that can lead to conflict between residents and the business. And this will help everyone. I strongly support the proposed changes and I encourage the, the, the board to continue to evaluate other existing ordinances in order to bring them up to date with the change in uses and to provide clarity for both residents and the businesses in the county. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, two ladies. We also have uh, <laughs> Mr. Andy Chess. Andy Chess. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Andy Tess and I'm also a Will County resident. And uh, first I'd like, you know, often people stop me because I'm in the veterans and thanks for my service. I want to thank you for your service. Uh, it is quite a pleasure to sit here and listen to a budget that's balanced, especially after reading this morning sometimes of other counties uh, that are placing tremendous burdens on taxpayers just to plug the gap, so thank you. 
Uh, I also want to thank you for standing during the Pledge of Allegiance. It is an extreme pleasure to watch people um, respect the flag. There are a lot of things you don't do in life. You don't tell the four-year-old there's no Santa Claus. You don't kneel during the National Anthem. Uh, I know I don't look it, but 50 years ago when I got my first car, uh, gasoline was 25 cents a gallon. And your typical service station uh, sold gas and oil, uh, gumballs, and had typically one or two service bays. That's it. The then language of zoning uh, basically reflected that type of facility. Those facilities typically were on uh, busy street corners surrounded by other businesses. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, they added uh, potato chips and pop and convenience store items, and the language was changed to include, uh, the zoning language was changed to include um, convenience stores and gas stations. Today, if anybody has been out on I-80 or any other major road, they see huge service plazas. And these service plazas do just about everything now. Uh, except check your oil and check your air. Uh, they sell food, they sell gumballs, they sell candy bars, they sell beer, they sell wine, uh, liquor, uh, they sell wine. Uh, State of Illinois allows for gaming. Uh, yet, looking at the language of the current uh, zoning ordinances, that footprint uh, can be built anywhere. It, you know, all, the, all the things that it offers to special use permits required, but the footprint can be offered uh, just about anywhere. And it was offered, and it was built on our corner. Um, 194th and Harlem, the footprint of the truck stop was built to a zoning ordinance that called for a gas station and, and, and convenience store. And I can say that because the owner, after he built the property, then went out to the, went to the state and applied for a gaming license as a truck stop. What we're asking is the language be brought up to date, uh, identified a little more clearly as to what constitutes a small station from a truck stop. What, what, what are the differences? Um, going forward, um, additional review should be made for some of the other practices of that business. You know, the state allows for open uh, alcohol serving at truck stops. Uh, they have gaming licenses. You know, do we want this on a corner lot in the residential area? I don't think so. Uh, again, going forward, uh, just to look at some of the other uses, car washes being one. Um, driverless cars, is, I, I don't know how many people here have, have GPS, it's probably everybody in that car, but how many times have you looked at your GPS and it tells you you're off in the woods uh, when you're actually on the road? Uh, will, will those service stations, will our little communities be affected by a driverless car uh, going into a neighborhood to get, you know, in a way of answering my own question, how does the driver was trying to feel? I don't know. Anyway, we thank you for your time. We ask you to vote yes on the amendments and perhaps look at uh, additional uh, aspects of the zoning requirement as it relates to those other activities that a, car, uh, that a gas station uh, can and does um, do. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Seeing now, we don't have any other speakers. Uh, okay. Uh, resolution 16258 is for amending our motor fuel regulations. It allows now for PUDs for these large facilities. It gives the county more control. We can put more conditions on it. I make a motion to approve. Second moved by Mr. Michael, second by Mr. Singer. Um, question, Mr. Malich. Yeah, when we when we passed this, 
it, uh, Tom just says it gives, gives us the opportunity to put more conditions on it. But it also makes it easier, which is a good thing, for businesses to expand and uh, work with the citizens that live in the community. So, uh, you know, it works both ways on this. It's not something that's anti-business, and it's not something that's going to uh, make it more difficult. For, it's something that will help everybody. Thank you. Ms. O'Donnell? Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to the <coughs> residents from that community. Um, they had a situation that came up there which was a negative to them, and they worked with the county board to uh, bring that situation up front and, and continue with it. And that's what I like to see from our residents is to involvement in our community government in making us uh, aware of situations that we might look at and change. We are faced with a lot of situations as county board members that vary widely. And so we appreciate your input in that and um, letting us know that. And I think that uh, everybody's worked hard to make it a better situation for moving forward, both for residents and our businesses. So thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Howard. Yeah, I'd just like to thank our staff uh, sitting on the uh, land use committee uh, they, they work diligently on, on these issues uh, and uh, they the amount of information that they actually provide us the land use staff is phenomenal and it allows us to make a, a, an informed decision and uh, if they don't have the answer they'll, they'll go get it for you I can't guarantee their answer is going to be short but they actually will provide us with an answer but thanks again guys and ladies any other discussion any other discussion motion and a second been made Previous roll call by Mr. Will Helmley, second by Ms. Daly Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, the motion has carried. Next resolution, 16259, designating Lincoln Highway Marker as its historic landmark. Uh, this is approximately 100 years old. It, it was removed from one site and it is now located at Lincoln White Central High School next to a gazebo. It, it has the figure of Lincoln on it. Uh, it. It's a great marker. We appreciate the resident who brought this forward uh, to be uh, requested as, as a historic landmark. Can I make a motion to approve? Moved by Mr. Weigel, second by Mr. Tumanello. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Gould, second by Mr. Gould, and second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor say it. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion is carried. That concludes my business. Our next meeting is October 11th. Thank you, Tom. Next up is Finance Committee. Mr. Chris Alone, Chairman. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Uh, first morning. up, I have some uh, monthly financial reports to place on file. We have the Illinois Department of Revenue uh, sales tax remitted to Will County for the month of June 2016 of $1,676,946.11. And the RTA tax received was $2,021,964.88 for a total of $3,698,910.99. Also, I'd like to place the Will County Monthly Treasurer's Report dated July 31st uh, from our County Treasurer, Steve Weber, on file. So they put both of those on file. I make that motion. Moved by Mr. Chris Malone, second by Mr. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion has carried. Next up is 16 260, transferring some funds within the county clerk budget. And I so move. Moved by Mr. Chris Malone, second by Ms. Collins. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll <laughs> by Ms. Daly Perry, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. And we have 16 261, authorizing county executive to execute necessary documents for tax delinquent program. And I so move. by Mr. Frisloan, second by Mr. Ballard. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Moran, second by Mr. Howard. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. And we have a host of meetings coming up that you'll all want to attend. The budget workshops will be held on September 20th and 21st. You really only need to attend one of those. It'll be the same thing both days. Just trying to make it convenient. Rashawn will be doing those budget workshops. So if you can make one of those, both of those will be at 9 o'clock in the morning. 
uh, we'll be discussing at the finance, next finance meeting on October 4th. I believe we're doing revenue first, and then on the 18th, we'll be doing uh, expenses. Lana will get uh, everybody notice on those. But we'll just have those two meetings. If, if we feel that uh, everybody still needs more information, we'll schedule an additional meeting. But last year, it seemed that two meetings were enough to get everybody the detail they needed. So our next regular scheduled meeting for finance will be October 4th at 10 a.m. And that's all I have. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Next up, Public Works and Transportation Committee, Mr. Gould. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning, John. First, I have resolution 16262, granting county aid and construction of a bridge over a tributary to Prairie Creek on Shear Road is petitioned by the Green Garden Road District, County Board District 2. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Stinger. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Winfrey, second by Mr. Wilhelmy. All in favor, signal, say goodbye. I say aye. 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 Contrary motion is carried. Resolution 16263, providing title commitment reports for use by the county from Wheatland Title Guarantee Company for Shanahan Manuka Road over the Ino Canal, County Board District 6, using the county's allotment of MFT funds. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Ms. Freitag. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll, Ms. Collins, second by Ms. Ogala. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion is carried. Resolution 16264, authorizing the Will County State's Attorney's Office to proceed with condemnation cases regarding the county's improvements <coughs> on Laraway Road at Cedar Road, County Board District 12. I move for approval. I move by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tumanello. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Wilhelmy, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary motion has carried. I have resolution 16265. Authorizing approval of professional services supplemental agreement for design engineering services with trans systems for roadway and appurtenant work on Arsenal Road from Baseline Road to Magnolia Lane using the county's allotment of RTA funds, County Board District 6. Move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gold, second by Ms. Freitag. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Staley Berry, second by Ms. Parker. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion has carried. I have resolution 16266, authorizing intergovernmental agreement for the installation and maintenance of flashing school zone signs at Lincoln Way Central High School on Schoolhouse Road, County Board District 12. I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Gould, second by Mr. Tumanau. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Ferry, second by Ms. Winfrey. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Our next meeting is October 4th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Next up is our public uh, judicial committee and Mr. Benefield, chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Darren. Uh, yeah, uh, no items to present for the board vote on today. Our next scheduled judicial committee meeting is scheduled for October 4th at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Public Health and Safety Committee, Ms. Ogala, Chairperson. Good morning, County Executive and members of the board. Morning, Judy. Right, first, I have this resolution 16 267 awarding a bid for soft goods for Sunny Hill Nursing Home. This bid will cover the um, last needs for the improvements made to the renovation for at 6th Avenue. So, once this is done, then our entire nursing home will be completely remodeled, and then we have a couple <coughs> maintenance projects after that. But at least then, everything will be done in every avenue will be really nice for all our residents there. So. Let's uh, make a motion. Moved by Ms. Ogala, second by Ms. Fritz. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Trainier, second by Ms. Parker. All in favor, signal sign by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Those are all the resolutions I have. Uh, I do have a couple of things to talk about. Uh, at, our, at our public health and safety committee meeting at the beginning of the month, we had Harold Dameron. He was the management director for our Will County Emergency Management uh, Department and he gave a great presentation which everyone should have received a uh, PowerPoint on that uh, all the different things that his department does with uh, I think he has 10 full-time and 
for several part-time people. So it's really amazing everything he does in case of an emergency. And the hard thing is they have to be prepared for so many different types of emergencies. So I just think that they did a fabulous job. And I hope you guys will all take the time to uh, review his um, presentation, his PowerPoint. Additionally, he has asked me to inform everybody of uh, something that's been, it's really a great honor to have received this, is that Will County has always made plans uh, to shelter our people when they're being displaced by a disaster. But we also know that we have to deal with the issue of displaced pets because can't, people can't always take their pets to a hotel or some family member's home while they're looking for their house to be repaired. And in doing that, of course, it always requires facilities and supplies. The American Kennel Club helps address this through a nationwide program that donates trailers stocked with supplies to county emergency management offices. The AKC recently contacted our Will County Emergency Management Agency to let us know that we have been selected as the first county in Illinois to benefit from this program. So it is something that's really exciting for everybody. Um, if, a, if something happens like that, we will have the facilities to house these displaced animals. A brief presentation and press uh, conference will be happening at 1.30 on September 20th, which is Tuesday, next week at JJC's Wittendorf uh, Center on Laraway Road. County Executive Walsh, and we'll be joined by staff from the Animal Control and EMA, as well as representatives from some of our local animal clubs that supported the acquisition of our trailer. Members of the County Board are welcome to attend and uh, please RSVP to Brenda Lutz at 815-740-8351 if you can attend that. I think this is really so wonderful for our county to have that. I know we've had various different things like tornadoes rip through our communities and um, this will give us the opportunity to house these animals. So I think that's fabulous. Um, that's all I have to say for today. Our next Public Health and Safety Committee is scheduled for October 6th at 9 a.m. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Next up, Legislative and Policy Committee, Ms. Hart, Chairperson. Good morning. Good morning, Jan. We just had, we went over our travel policy, so we just have one thing. Resolution 16-268 updating updating book on the business reimbursement <coughs> regulations, and I so move. Moved by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. Parker. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Moran? I had a question in committee that uh, the auditor was going to address on the time that a conference ends, and I'm not sure was that addressed, Suzanne, or do you know? Is Duffy here? Yeah, he is. Is it in mind? Uh, yeah, we did look at that again. Based on, based on our research just from the last day, no, it was not addressed. With that summertime rule? <coughs> no. No, the, the five, <coughs> if the conference ends by 5 p.m., you must travel home that day. My question was, if the conference ends at 5 p.m. and you're in Los Angeles, and it takes you until 6 o'clock to get to the airport, two hours before your flight, then it's 8 o'clock, it's a four-hour flight home. You get back to O'Hare at midnight or after, then it's an hour or so to get your bags and stuff. You're talking about 1 in the morning, and then by the time you drive an hour home, you're talking about 2 in the morning. Is that reasonable? I, I, what I asked was for the committee to look at it to see if that 5 p.m. could be local time, uh, which would make more sense because if it was if the conference ended at 5 p.m. local time, then no matter where you're at in the United States, it probably is reasonable for we you to get out of here. Or why don't I come up to the front? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, John. Yeah, John, thank you for your question. At the end of section three, the language in the policy right now that meets IRS regulations is employees are encouraged to return home on the final day of the conference whenever possible. So 5 p.m. Again, it's it's based on a reasonable standpoint. So if you have a, an end of a conference at nine in the morning after you know a you know a red eye meeting, you're encouraged to again travel home as soon as possible. So if you're getting done at 9 a.m., 
you, hopefully we're not encouraging our employees to stay one more no, evening. I, I understand that, but my question, my question to the committee was, uh, there was a particular paragraph that said that if the conference ended before 5 p.m., that the person had to travel home that day. Right. Again, it, again it is, we, we, put the, we put the language together, we recommended the language based on our conversations with county board staff for this policy for conferences which end at 5 p.m. Lodging expenses for that night will not be, will also be, will also be reimbursed. So we don't say, we say anything that's ending after 5 p.m. will be reimbursed. Oh, so it doesn't say if it ends at 5 p.m. it won't be reimbursed. Yeah, there's not a negative. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ruth, is this? I was just, I was going to say the way we've applied it in the past uh, was, it was uh, central standard time. So we did use it in local time uh, after five. Because uh, it has come up throughout the years under our previous authors, and it was agreed that we would use our current and local central standard time. Just so you know, that's how it's been applied. Okay. Mr. Brooks? Um, does that include special circumstances whereby there's been some incidents? I think uh, some of you guys that went to NACO, et cetera, storms or whatever, and they were not able to come back. That, that's extended. There are circumstances that does cover that. Yeah, again, if the, if, if the employer has a reasonable expectation that you will incur expenses or engage in uh, conference business purpose meetings. Correct. Yeah, that would extend past five. So even though you're not engaging though in the conference, et cetera, whatever special circumstance is, you have to stay over. You're not necessarily engaging in the conference. But if you're, yeah, well then, again, it's the reasonable, the okay. reasonable sample. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions for Duffy? Thank you. Any other questions? A motion and seconds on the floor. Um, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for Suzanne or anybody? Previous roll call by Mr. Ballage. Second by Ms. Ogala. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Our next meeting will be October 11th. Thank you. Next up is our Capital Improvement Committee. Ms. Freitag, chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. There are no resolutions today. I just want to thank everyone for participating in the um, wearing blue today for prostate awareness. Please know that next week is, or next month, is Wear Pink for Breast Cancer Awareness at the next meeting. I just wanted to um, ask you all to, one of our own is suffering right now from cancer, um, if you didn't know, Ken Kopas. And I just received information uh, last night and some more this morning. He's not doing really well. He's in the hospital. And so he could really use some of your thoughts and prayers. So, thank you. Our next meeting is September 20th at 9.30, and we have another one on October 4th at 11 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. <coughs> Next up, Executive Committee, Mr. Bruce's chairman. Good morning, Mr. Executive. Good morning, Jim, County Board. Uh, my first item this morning would be uh, to go on the public hearing for authorizing a franchise agreement with CMN and <coughs> IUS Inc more commonly known as Metronet. They're a, a, a cable uh, uh, system. So I will uh, make a motion to go to the public hearing. Move by Mr. Mitchell, sure. second by Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Howard? Yes. Gallup? Yes. Singer? Yes. Moran? Yes. Rice? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Freitag? Gould? Yes. Balage? Yes. Bizalum? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Ferry? Yes. Wilhelmy? Yes. Hart? Yes. Timonello? Yes. 
Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Berry? Yes. And Yes. Thank you. 25 affirmative. 25 affirmative. We are in a public hearing. Mr. Executive, the only thing I might mention, I don't know if the uh, state attorney's office uh, wants to make any comment, but this is pretty much our standard agreement that we have with other cable companies to utilize uh, uh, right of ways to lay their, uh, in this case, I believe it's going to be fiber optics. Uh, certainly, uh, we try to keep, uh, keep everybody equally and keep uh, a competitive spirit uh, in the uh, business world. So uh, 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 it's pretty much our standard lease. I don't know if the uh, flash code, do you uh, wish to make a comment? No. Okay. <laughs> and you have to give Harvey to your office of it because it also probably was more engaged with this than the state's attorney's office. I don't know if Jim, you just want to say it's pretty much our standard. I think that's a good summary. Under federal and state law, we're required uh, to uh, to provide um, competition <laughs> and to allow a would-be competitor to enter the market on the same terms as current providers. In this case, Comcast is the main provider. Prowse has a, a small area of accounting. Uh, Mr. John Campbell, Vice President and General Counsel, for MetroNet is here to address any issues that any members would have. But as Mr. Musa said, uh, there aren't a lot of areas to really negotiate. They're entitled to enter under federal and state law uh, to the market and uh, attempt to, to garner whatever you know customers they can uh, they can attempt to, to sign up. Practically, I think because they've recently been building. Uh, on the playing field, because they do have a franchise agreement, as I recall, with both Plainfield and more recently Romeoville. They're looking to enter the market uh, in the Carillon area, because that is a, a significant part of Uncorporated Will County. Mr. Uh, Campbell is here to address any questions. Mr. Mischief, one. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I don't know if the public has any questions. But I think like I said, it's pretty standard. I welcome. Uh, 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 MetroNet into the marketplace. I think it's always good we have competition and, and we have alternatives. Uh, so uh, welcome to Little County. I look for your expansion. I, I did uh, 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 would like to note that I asked uh, about uh, serving uh, more what I'll call rural residential areas. That seems to be MetroNet's kind of niche in Indiana. And he said they'll continue that here. I don't know if you'd like to comment on that you probably will be filling a void for perhaps it's not currently being served at some point. Yeah, we're currently evaluating um, uh, a number of communities in, in, uh, in Will County as well as unincorporated areas. And we look at this as just our, our first uh, first step into Will County. And we look, uh, uh, for, uh, look forward to other opportunities to expand. Any other comments? Ms. Trainier? Hi, good morning. My question was uh, about when you do the installation. Does it go into some sort of existing pipes or do you dig up new trenches or site? I mean, how does it affect the neighborhood? I'm just curious. Uh, I too believe in, in competition, but you know, I just wonder how it affects. No, it's an excellent question. Um, we are going to be laying uh, all new fiber optic cable. Um, and that will entail um, us putting that fiber optic cable on existing utility poles and also going underground in neighborhoods. So it, it is pretty extensive construction, um, but, but we believe that you know, fiber optic cable is, is, the, uh, is where you want to be in the future. It's world-class uh, infrastructure, and we think that it, it, um, it will make uh, any area we serve future-proof, so it's, it's worth the, uh, the construction. Is there something different in the ground now? I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not with the cable company. <laughs> yeah, each carrier puts in their, their own plant, and depending on who that carrier is, they may have anything from um, fiber optic cable, coaxial cable, copper cable. It all depends on their network and their technology. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Howard? Uh, yeah, I just uh, got a couple quick questions. Uh, it, when you provide this service, is this population driven or are you just looking for the most dense areas? 
or is there a commitment on behalf of your company to serve all of the residents of Will County? We are not in a position, we, we have to take in uh, a lot of factors before we determine whether we're going to build out an area. As a second market entrant, <coughs> the dynamics are a little bit different. Um, uh, an incumbent carrier necessarily has the advantage of being uh, a, a monopoly, and and uh, from that perspective, they can, <coughs> you know, they they can have a little bit more ubiquitous coverage. Um, so from our perspective, we've got to look at all types of factors, uh, density. Um, where are the folks that really want our service and would benefit from it? Uh, but having said that, we, we like to work with communities and counties uh, to cover areas that are uh, that uh, municipal and, and county officials think are important to be covered. So we we look forward to having those discussions in Will County. Okay. I, uh, the, the second part is I'd, li I'd like to see that commitment for the rural areas again because the services uh, you know that are available for us and especially competitive services are, are somewhat limited at this time point in time. And then uh, I know if you're servicing the, uh, Jason, Indiana, I know the eastern side of the, of the county could actually probably benefit from this, uh, you know, if, if you expand your services in, in, in the Indiana area and then it bleed over to the uh, Illinois side. So I, I'd like to see that commitment, if, you know. Again, I, I understand you're just here to uh, work on this agreement, but uh, if, if you could look at that, we'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I absolutely look forward to the discussion. Any any other questions uh, for John before we oh. Grant Spooner, uh, Lockport Township, Unincorporated. Uh, I have two cable companies in front of my house now, uh, Comcast and AT&T. Comcast, they can pick off right from the cable and go to the house. But AT&T requires a junction point where they go to and then they come back to the house from that point. Do you need the service? And also, the second part, are you going to provide service to the local access stations? The local? Uh, the television access stations uh, in oh, each community. The, the, the peg channels? Yes. Yeah, we, we absolutely have a federal re requirement to do that. And so we will adhere to that federal requirement to carry peg channels. Now, <clears throat> in regard to the first question, um, it just depends on what, um, how the, the local utility covers the area, the local electric utility. So if, if there's a pole line, more than likely we would drop, uh, have a fiber drop to the home from the pole line. Um, if it's underground construction, we would utilize something called a flower pot where uh, lines would be centralized and then they would go from that point on into the individual customer uh, locations. That flower pot, by the way, is very um, non-invasive. It's small. You can hardly detect it. You could mow over it with a lawnmower without uh, doing any damage to the lawnmower or otherwise see it. So, um, and it would obviously be located in the public right away. Does that answer your question? Yes. Grant? Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you, John. Thank you. Mr. Mist is the... Hey, I'll make if there's no, no, nothing further. Any, uh, any discussion on board, board members? No, seeing none. I'll make a motion in the, to come out of public hearing. Moved by Mr. Mister, second by Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Sure. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Howard? Yes. O'Gallo? Yes. Singer? Yes. Moran? Yes. Grace? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Freitag? Yes. Gould, yes. Ballage, yes. Grislin, yes. Winfrey, yes. Parker, yes. Stanley Ferry, yes. Wilhelmy, yes. Art, yes. Tumano, yes. Michael, yes. Collins, yes. Barry, yes. and Eustace. Yes. Thank you. 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 Uh, CMN dash Russ Inc. So, so moved. Second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous bill called by Ms. Winfrey. Second by Mr. Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary motion has carried. Uh, uh, Mr. Executive, uh, 16270. 
after much discussion in caucuses and the state's attorney uh, weighing in on his uh, view, uh, I'm going to make a motion to remove 16 to 70 from the agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Muster, second by Mr. Mayor. Any discussion? Any Previous roll call by Mr. Wilhelmy, second by Ms. Staley Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion has appeared. So oh, you know. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mayor? Uh, yes. Brooks? Yes. Howard? Yes. O'Gallis? Yes. Singer? No. Moran? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainer? Yes. Benefield? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Reichen? Yes. Gould? Yes. Balich? No. Grislam? No. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Ferry? Yes. Wilhelm? Yes. Hart? Yes. Tumanello? No. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ferry? Yes. And Mises? No. Thank you. Twenty affirmative, five negative. What's that? Twenty affirmative, five negative. Thank you. Motion has carried. We move on on the agenda. Next, next we have. Oh, 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 wait, 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 Mr. Mr. Glasgow would like to have a okay. Speak here. Yeah. Uh, just so that it's clear to the public that's watching this that none of the county board members have done anything uh, harmful here. This this would not be within the county board's uh, authority to pass such uh, an, an ordinance. It would have no legal effect if you did pass it. Um, so it, uh, you know, two other counties have done it, but you know, it, it has no legal effect. And uh, there's questions as to whether or not this new amendment to going to take effect with regards to the IMR statute is constitutional or not. I'm sure it's going to be litigated. So, um, you know, just, I know there's been, a, a, you know, uh, some disagreement about this, but the bottom line is, um, no matter which way you voted uh, on this last uh, motion, uh, if it did pass, then we'd be advising Larry to veto it. And it's, it's just not something that the county board has the authority to do. Uh, I think everybody on the county board, if their intentions are good, they want to save the county money. Uh, and uh, yeah. just, uh, I, I'm waiting for a chance to say this, but in 1946, my father was one of the first three employees of the IMRF. And he uh, was the guy that drove all over the state of Illinois for 20 years and signed up every governmental body. And I don't think he ever realized that his son would be in that retirement plan. But uh, anyway. Uh, so, I don't know if anybody has any questions, but uh, I think uh, the floor has prevailed for today, and uh, <coughs> we'll move on. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Like, uh, I have a question. Next, we have a question. Mr. Howard, you got a question? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So, so, Mr. Glasgow, the last vote that we just took was basically not to vote on this particular resolution. If we were proceeded to vote on this, basically, we could potentially be breaking the law. No, no, no. It's just saying it would have been something that it would have been ultra various beyond your authority and it really would have had no legal impact whatsoever. So, uh, you, you don't have the authority to do, uh, to remove, to basically withdraw from IRMF. There's no statutory authority to do that. So, uh, that's why this was tabled today. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can I go now? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're, we're all set. Okay. 16271, authorizing the county executive to waiver the terms and conditions of existing lease agreement with First and West Bank lease. I'll move uh, for approval. Second. Move by Mr. Minister. Second by Ms. Winfrey. Any discussion? Any discussion? Previous no. Previous? No. I'll the negative. Oh, that's true. Any, any discussion? 
Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Howard? Yes. O'Gallon? Yes. Singer? Yes. Moran? Yes. Bryce? Yes. Harris? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Benefield? Brooks? Yes. Brighton? Yes. Gould? Yes. Balanch? Yes. Brisbane? Yes. Winfrey? Yes. Parker? Yes. Staley Ferry? Yes. Wilhelmy? Yes. Hart? Yes. Chiminato? Yes. Weigel? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ferry? Yes. And Mises? Yes. Thank you. 25 confirmed. 25 affirmative. I would like to recognize President of the First Midwest Bank, Jim Rolfe, uh, is here with us today. Jim, it's been an extraordinary working with uh, with you over the num last number of years and uh, your, your help and participation and willingness to cooperate uh, and everything. Was, was greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Best of luck in your new facility. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Okay, uh, next we have uh, 16272, authorizing lease with Baconers Pharmacy for community pharmacy within the community health uh, uh, center. I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Ms. O'Gallo. Any questions? Read the protocol by Mr. Gould, seconded by Mr. Tuminello. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Next we have 16273, authorizing emergency repairs due to water main break at Sunny Hill Nursing Home. Now move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, seconded by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. O'Gala, second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, the motion is carried. Next we have resolution 16274, professional service agreement for commissioning agent at public safety complex. And I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, seconded by Ms. Winfrey. Any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Or Mr. Moran and second by Ms. Staley Perry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Next, uh, 16275. Uh, Mr. Executive, I'd like to make a motion to remove this from the agenda. I move by Mr. Mises, second by Mr. Mayor to remove uh, resolution 16275 from the agenda. Any discussion? Any discussion? Previous roll by Mr. Howard, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Next we have resolution 16276, authorizing negotiation for consulting services for the freight mobility plan, and I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Musa, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Moran, second by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Next we have resolution 16, uh, 277, declaring sheriff's seized vehicle surplus and authorizing disposal, and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Frizzalone. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Ballish, second by Ms. Fritz. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. Next we have resolution 16278, renewing contract for telecommunication panel material, and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, seconded by Mr. Ferry. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Harris, second by Ms. Winfrey. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Next, we have 16279, authorizing the lease agreement with the Burris West Building LLC for temporary storage of impounded vehicles currently located at the public safety complex site. I'm going to move for approval. Uh, uh, I need to say a few more words about this. I'll, I'll move for approval. Move of Mr. Moved by Mr. Musa, second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions? Yeah, the other thing I'd like to mention, you know, all, all our lease agreements and contracts are always subject to the approval of the state's attorney's office. In this particular one, because uh, uh, Mary Tatro from the uh, state's attorney's office, chief of the civil division, uh, uh, 
Phil has worked out a few details on this. I just want to make sure people are aware of that. Uh, Mary, I don't know if you'd like to make a comment at this time. There are a few things I'd like to tighten up in the agreement. There's particularly one provision that deals with environmental liability. Dave Tack has alleviated <coughs> most of my concerns, but I still think we can tighten up the verbiage to make sure that the county is adequately protected. So I just wanted to make sure that you were aware there will be some additional changes, but it will be in substantially the form that you're passing today. Everybody understand that? Moved and seconded by the mayor. Uh, previous roll by Mr. Wilhelmy, second by Mr. Parker. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Next, we have resolution 16280, authorizing a memorandum of understanding with IDOT, Joliet, and Centercorn properties to the Hobalt Road. Bridge project, and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Um, Moran. Um, any questions? Um, previous roll call by Ms. Baby Berry. Second. And second by Ms. Trainier. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion is carried. I have uh, 16281 replacement hires for the land use department. Uh, development analyst one, I move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Wilhelmy. Any questions? Previous roll by Mr. Trainier, second by Ms. Rice. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, motion has carried. Our next executive meeting will be October 6th at 10 a.m. And next I'll have the uh, appointments by the county executive and I will move for approval. Moved by Mr. Mustis, second by Mr. Pat, Pat Brooks. Uh, any questions? Previous roll by Ms. Hart, second by Ms. Collins. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, motion has carried. Mr. Executive, that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Jim. Next up is public comment. We have one person signed up for public comment. Uh, Armella, you, uh, are you wanting to speak? Yes. Please come down. Drain America of money. Hurt the 
ego of the man. Oh yeah, oh sir, your wife has to get a job to keep the roof, to keep America going so we could help the foreigners who are still taking, I don't know how they could look in a mirror. Well anyway, breaking up our families. Children coming home, you're too tired to have a family discussion. No, but there they are. Come to us, children. We don't believe in families. All right, that's my first suggestion. Seeing their priority is money. Let the people spend it the way they want. I, I'm not going to cuss. Bull crap on what these proposals are. I'm tired of bricks. Well, and, and there is such a thing as volunteers. The church needs a roof. Oh, collect. What do you mean collect? Arms, legs, eyes, get together. All right. Finally, Mayo Clinton is supporting me. Not me. I, I'm just on the list. But what I was saying about being mocked as obese, what, 80%? Most of it's intentional. How do you think the Sumi wrestlers come about? The origin was Japan. And it's here. The second type of fatty tissue is visceral. And that is scraped from animals, put in food, drink, uh, whatever, whatever they need. And now they're here with gyms. Not necessarily just jacks, but those that accept it their philosophy of get what you can. And uh, boy, those dumb Americans, did they fall into our trap. And what we gave them was sincerity and care and prosper. Well, anyway, we don't know where it's at. Food, drink, medicine, pick a weed and stick it in a capsule, uh, rains. Thank you, foreigners, for coming in. No, this is important. China. China. Mental illness, bipolar is nothing but a money-making scheme. That is lack of personality traits. You're a robot. Well, I said enough. I'm up to here, and I'll tell you, they're so damn ungrateful. And they're not number one. Where is he? <laughs> oh boy, if you're number one and you go against him, okay, they could give you a pill, you could go to a doctor. Carmella, uh, Carmella, please. Well, yeah, we have, are strong. We, we it's are. about time they have a conscience. Thank you. And our children. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else that wishes to speak? At this time, public comment. Moving on. Crowd. India, too. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Here they come. Republican caucus chair, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Um, we definitely have to celebrate our ability to have freedom of speech in this country that allows everyone the opportunity to come in and say what's on their mind. Um, a lot's happened here in the month of September. I'm really surprised that we're done before noon. Actually, if I move quicker and Jim doesn't come back, we might get done before 11.30. <laughs> Uh, today we signed a labor agreement and at the same time construction began on the sheriff's facility. The courthouse and other capital projects will soon be following. This has been a long time coming from the comprehensive study that began when I was chair of capital improvement, carried forward by Denise Winfrey and now by Reagan Freitag and our finance chair Mike Frizzolo, who brought these projects home. I really appreciate all the hard work and thanks to all the county board members, both those that are not here now with us and those that are here, for all the hard work that they did. And, you know, I want to especially give, now that he's back, uh, a special thanks to our speaker, Jim Eustace, who doesn't get recognized enough, I think, for all the times that he's put in and energy 
you know, Jim has been in the leadership here for over 16 years, and when you're in that position, you continue to do what you need to do to help others succeed. And I really want to uh, point out that uh, things would not go smoothly if Jim hadn't been behind the scenes helping get this done. And you, Mr. Executive, did a great job here with the budget today. I look forward to reviewing it. And I want to thank all the hard work that Rashawn and Melissa and others have done. This is not an easy task. But it is an essential task in running an effective and the creation and running of an effective government here in Will County. And thanks to my committee chairs and all my board members for all their hard work this month and every month. And uh, that really has been shown with us now tracking hours the way we do. I, I forget how many hours that we end up putting in here. So I want to thank everybody for all the hard work that they've done with that. And also uh, recognizing today, September, as uh, prostate cancer awareness. Cancer continues to be a terrible illness that takes millions of lives. And a lot of those that are close to us are affected by this. Uh, we need to continue to support and fund the research to eradicate this terrible disease. And it is one of those things that we definitely reach across the aisle to pull together uh, in our annual event uh, to raise funds. And uh, my heart and prayers are out with Ken Copas and uh, another one of the sheriff's deputies whose wife has passed away recently, uh, whose funeral is today. Uh, our prayers are out for them. And at the same time, like I said, this was a busy month. We have to remember those that sacrificed during 9-11. We should never forget the sacrifice of those that died and were injured. And at the same time, celebrate and remember the unity and solidarity that brought this country together. We know that when times get tough, we can reach across and put away our differences and remember what it is that brings us together and the commonalities of what makes us the humans and Americans that we are. And at this time, I'd like to take a moment of silence for us to remember the families and friends of those lost in 9-11 and to those that are not only that we've lost from cancer, but that are suffering through that right now. Now, Larry, we're on the opposite side on a lot of topics. But I think we both can agree that having the Cubs come home and win uh, and taking the uh, uh, <coughs> closing it off is much better than doing it in St. Louis. So with one left, let's hope that the Cubs will pull it off today and uh, we can move forward and uh, go win a World Series. I'm sure they Mr. Will. Walsh, could I, this is important. Do you know why prostate cancer is on the increase? And do you know why <laughs> breast cancer? I really appreciate it, and that uh, no. why we have to know where it's going. Carmela, Carmela, please. No, this is important. I know it's important. Money is not going to cure it. But it's you, you, you don't, you don't have teaching, the floor, Carmela. They are teaching masturbation. They are putting creams that are have uh, microorganisms on the breast. They're causing it. Money. It's that money, it's the evil shit <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I have to say, sure, that never was remember the face. Yeah, evil maniac. <laughs> 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 you, you, you shouldn't have brought the Cubs up. <laughs> Today in a uh, big, big, big uh, rally for the Cubs tonight. Uh, so, let's not be a Cardinal fan. Cardinal fans, yeah. Uh, next up is our Democratic Caucus Chair, Professor Mr. Brooks. Well, that's all the Cubs act to follow. Uh, uh, good morning. Good morning. I know you good, mean morning. Good, morning. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Mr. Executive and residents of Will County and Board. Uh, let me, I fortunately have to echo some of the things that Chuck said, but I think they were well pointed. Uh, let me go back to two hours ago when the uh, uh, pastor gave the invocation on this morning, and uh, uh, Gretchen Fritz uh, introduced her pastor in bringing in a time to help us all to remember 15 years ago, uh, almost 3,000 souls that were perished and six 
thousand that were injured. And I think what a time to be called in the pastor's church to do a job when you are called to encourage people at a time uh, when something tragic happened in America. So I, uh, uh, Gretchen, thank you so much for introducing me to your pastor and uh, what an outstanding job he did. <coughs> Secondly, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Executor, for your budget on this morning. I think your first slide summed it all up for me when you said that we have a $570 million budget, it's balanced, and we still maintain our AA plus bond. I was hoping you would turn the lights back on and turn it off after that, because <laughs> <laughs> I, the rest of it was helpful too. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you so much for your uh, balanced budget presentation on this morning. And then secondly, I certainly want to thank all of our 25 county board members that are present here on today uh, for the executive committee uh, uh, 16-270, the IMRF, and supporting that. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Glasgow, for helping us all to understand a little bit better what it means and how it affects all of us, whether you participate in it or not. Thank you so much for your vote. And then lastly, uh, all the uh, resolutions, proclamations, I have to mention the uh, cancer take back tonight breast, I mean uh, uh, prostate cancer, sorry to hear about Ken Copas and thank you so much for bringing that to our attention because certainly we'll keep him and his family in our prayer. But what very timely, what very timely proclamation of time that we're living in. And then I want to conclude by telling you what one of the speakers said this morning during the take back tonight proclamation. She said, unfortunately, we still live in a time when we recognize uh, something like that. And I, do, and I hope that and pray that I live long enough that we never have to recognize uh, domestic violence in America or in this country. So having said that, thank you all for uh, your participation on this morning, and may God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. Executive. Thank you, Pastor Brooks. Next is County Board Speaker, Ben Mears. Well, I don't think there's much left for me to say. <laughs> uh, but I would like to thank everyone for their, their work all month. Uh, uh, once again, I think it's spirit of cooperation uh, and uh, we get things accomplished. I'd also like to say that on the prostate cancer, look all you men out there, make sure that you get a good check, get your PSA done, uh, physical exams when it's necessary, and uh, uh, it's something that is uh, curable if it's, there's early detection. And uh, Mr. Executive, as being a survivor of, of uh, prostate cancer, I applaud you and your, your fight and your example you've shown that it's something that uh, you continue to try to bring awareness to. And so I thank you for your efforts in those areas also. Uh, to you Cub fans, uh, congratulations. Uh, uh, you, got through the first, you got through the first level. <laughs> uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Seeing no more business, uh, any more business, uh, we will stand at recess. Uh, till Thursday, October 20th, 2016 at 9.30 a.m.